Chris Vila Beck in New York, Rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And this is a pre-recorded one, I'm afraid. I'm terribly sorry. I try to stream live uh, daily. I can't stream live on Fridays because it's uh, Sabbath. Uh, 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 Sabbath comes in around seven o'clock for me, which is like five in the UK. So uh, uh, it's a bit it's a bit early to stream. So I, it's it's better to do a, uh, was it pre recorded? Uh, and today, yeah, you might notice it's not Friday. It's Wednesday, right? No, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Well, it depends when you're watching it. If you're watching it the day it came out, it's when. It, no, it's still not Wednesday. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, which means it's another Jewish holiday. This Jewish holiday commemorates the splitting of the Red Sea. Uh, uh, so I'm offline, but I'll be online tomorrow and. At, um, I think seven o'clock uh, UK time. Yeah, that's probably the plan. Yeah, seven o'clock UK time uh, on live on Rumble. Go over to Rumble, subscribe there if you're not on Rumble. Get over to Rumble. Freaking awesome. I'm able to talk on Rumble openly, right? Yeah, not hatefully, because I don't think I'm a hateful person. Although, really, does anybody? I don't know, right? But uh, um, uh, wherever you are, I'm on Twitter, on YouTube, on Rumble. But Rumble is the place where I get the best. Um, Best views, right? And also the best growth. My channel's really growing nicely there now. So if you haven't subscribed there, if you can hit the subscribe button, that insanely is very helpful. Like, no, that is uh, insanely helpful, right? That is, yeah, very insanely helpful. Thank you very much. Anybody subscribing at Rumble? Oh, thank you very much. Anybody subscribing at YouTube, for that matter. Or, or follow me on Twitter. Look at the video notes. They're all there. Everything you need to know to find me is right there. Fine. So we've got this eclectic mass of... Uh, um, uh, how do we how do we describe it? Complete bollocks written by uh, uh, Total Hacks. <laughs> I think the fair way to describe it. Complete bollocks written by Total Hacks about uh, Doctor Who. I haven't pre-read these because they're it's never. I never need to, right? I never need to pre-read these because they're always comedy bloody gold because they're always written by idiots. So we're gonna plow through as many as we can, and uh, uh, we might take the piss, right? We might that might happen. You know, gird yourself, gird your loins, ladies and gentlemen. Do women have loins? Well, I guess they must do. I, I don't know. Uh, gird your loins. I think that means put, put on your knickers, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Put your knickers on. Uh, uh, it doesn't sound as good as girding one's loins. But uh, uh, listen, if your loins are out there, give them a good gird. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you'll find it uh, uh, you know, efficacious. Don't gird them too often, right? Too much. You'll go blind, mate. You'll go blind. Okay. Fine with that. Let's start off with CBR. Uh, uh, always a source of uh, uh, extreme hilarity. Uh, Doctor Who's unit spin-off is better than Torchwood Revival. Could it be better than Torchwood Revival because you decided to cancel uh, uh, John Barrowman? Could, could, it, could it be weirdly connected to that, do you think? I, I don't know. You tell me. Uh, unit has been confirmed. Well, not really. No, it hasn't been. Hasn't been confirmed. That's a strong room. It hasn't been confirmed. As the first Doctor Who spin-off, Rusty Davis' second era, which, uh, uh, which has a strong potential... Uh, which has a strong story potential, which has a stronger story potential than a torture spin-off. But the, what you know what it doesn't have, right? It doesn't have a leading, um, like a leading president. I'm going to say leading man, right? I'm going to say a leading man. You know why? I've seen lots and lots and lots of female-led science fiction over the last five years. Almost all of it is nonsense. All of all it is just low-quality garbage. Uh, I... Uh, so uh, I'm just not really up for female-led sci-fi. It's not like I dislike female-led sci-fi. If you uh, um, if you go to Big Finish, uh, they got a range called Bernie Sunfield, which is the range they started with. Generally speaking, excellent, and it's feminine, and it's science fiction, and it's cerebral. It's very, very good, right? It's actually genuinely speaking, very, very, very good. Uh, um, but like, yeah, you know, what can I tell you? Kate Lethbridge Stewart. Uh, What's her name? I can't remember the na name of the actor. I'm sure they'll they'll uh, um, they'll uh, say a name here. Um, just is isn't very commanding. Doesn't get my attention. It it just doesn't really work. I'm sorry. Look, here's the thing. They they're desperately trying to convince you that men and women are interchangeable, and they're not. Men and women are unique, uh, and, and you know that that's basically what they are. They are just unique. Uh, uh, and they're not interchangeable. I mean, it's not to say that men can't do things that women normally excel at and women can't do things that men normally excel at. Of course they can, right? Absolutely, of course they can. But, like, being feminine is a thing. Being masculine is a thing. And they have different energies. 
And, and look, we just see it in in the audience response. Fra quite frankly, uh, the you know the here. Yeah, let's look at how Jodie Whittaker went down. One of the great examples of uh, uh, female casting, and it was a disaster, right? A complete disaster. Don't tell me. Oh no, Netflix. No, it wasn't Netflix. It was. Just the same garbage tier woke uh, uh, sci-fi by woke. Woke, I have two active um, uh, definitions. Firstly, it is a mindless adherence to the uh, uh, morality of social media. Like right? whatever social media algorithms have decided is moral that day, you mindlessly adhere to it. Like uh, um, here in Israel, a lot of people are putting Israeli flags in their Facebook bios because uh, there was a terrorist attack where uh, these two daughters and a, uh, the mother passed as well were uh, were gunned down. It's just horrible. It really is just absolutely horrible. And the well, the, the daughters were uh, died instantly, and the mother uh, passed away. I think yesterday morning or yesterday afternoon. It's, it's just absolutely horrible. So people are putting Israeli fags in their Facebook files. Like, Look, I want to be supportive. I do, but I don't like doing stuff like that because there's so much crap that we're all herded in to do to making ourselves feel. Uh, virtuous. So that's the first definition of uh, woke. Uh, the second definition of woke is the uncomfortable, which I'm using again because somebody in the comments said, I really prefer this. It's the uncomfortable platforming of ideology in a uh, franchise with an existing strong uh, existent strong fan base, right? That's like, when you know when they know they can reach a lot of people, uh, uh, and they go, "Oh, we better put a message in here." Sadly, it's it's more they better put Doctor Who in the message, right? And not even much at that, right? Which is why it generally speaking fails, right? So, uh, Kate Lifford, I don't know I'm not really psyched for it at all. Uh, um, again, if you can get me a a uh, a good female central character presence, great. I have no problem with that, right? I have no problem with that. But like, just the stuff I've seen has been garbage, and everybody we're seeing on on, on the screen right now, other than Louis C.K., uh, um, I just don't think has l leading quality in them, right? Leading, leading lady, leading whatever quality in them. Right, Jordy Whitaker's song, song, The Power of the Daleks, one of her uh, uh, most appreciated uh, uh, stories, but um, because she wasn't in it much. Featured former Doctor Who companions Ace and Tegan, one of the best bits of it, right? I, I mean, Tegan I could live without, but it was nice seeing Ace again. Recruited as freelancers by unit to help out on a mission involving the Master. Well, it's not like, you know, it's out the box storytelling, isn't it? I mean, like, really? <laughs> Come on, this is like garbage tier fan fiction, uh, uh, which I'm happy they did, but it's still like garbage tier fan fiction. Um, you know, the, the unit to help out the mission involving the master during the episode uh, episode's epilogue, a support group of former Doctor Who commanders featuring Kate Stewart uh, commenting how uh, she may wish to recruit them for future missions. Uh, at the time of the episode's airing, it seems to be setting up a, a unit spin off. Are you out your fucking mind, right? What? No. No. That's not what's happening. The, uh, uh, they got, okay, they're showing pictures of, uh, uh, X-Men. So I was listening to your boy Zach yesterday, and he was saying, go back and watch old superhero movies from before 2016. Uh, even bad ones. X-Men 3, which I really got to test this out. Uh, and you'll be amazed how good they are, right? You'll be amazed. Because, like, I can't watch. Uh, current day uh, uh, superhero movies. They're just I, uh, Doctor Strange. I tried over and over again. I couldn't get through it. I'm, I'm about forty minutes into Avatar: The Way of Water. God, it's bloody hell! Like, what? What an incredible waste of human resources that movie is, right? Uh, um, so, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I really want to go back and see how. Yeah, because he said I sat through X Men Three, which was the weakest one, you know, in one sitting. And I just generally can't speak and get, you know, get through these things in one sitting because they just, my brain just starts to melt. Anyway, um, during the other they might want to, uh, so they wasn't setting up a spin off then. No, 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 listen. Ross D. Davis came in to fix Doctor Who, right? I know people say, oh, but what about all the drag and trans characters? Well, that might be how we were thinking about fixing Doctor Who. But yeah, Doctor Who was on its ass, right? And I think everything about the Chibnall era is going to go, right? I genuinely think it's, it's, it's all going to go. Um, so they weren't setting up a unit spin-off, you nig ding a -ling. Yeah, well, well, absolute idiot. Uh, but much like Martha Jones, uh, uh, much like how Martha Jones appeared 
in uh, uh, in Torchwood. Oh, no, not no, not really. Uh, since the uh, since the start of twenty twenty three, several sources have reported Doctor Who is expanding its universe uh, it, since twenty twenty two. Exactly, especially I mean, essentially. Uh, again, uh, serious focus on the uh, Unified Intelligent Task, which is the United Nations Intelligence Task Force, is confirmed. No, it's not! It is in no way of means confirmed, I'm sorry. With Gemma Redgrave's Kate Stewart in the lead role. Again, yeah, just... Uh, uh, the series will be... Likely for a similar format to to uh, Torchwood. It says you, knowing nothing about it, including if it's been greenlit or not. Uh, among, all, uh, uh, among all the speculation regarding the other potential spin-offs, a serious centre around uh, unit may be the wisest option as there's much more story potential. How the fuck do you know? What the hell? How do you know about what's we'll say Everything, I believe, is going to come out of the um, uh, November and the Christmas specials, right? So much so, the big finish 60th anniversary thing is has a was going to be a what a six or seven uh, e uh, episode release, and it, where they get another one uh, because they wanted. I think they're going to tie it into something that we're going to find out, right? Some kind of spoiler, which is why I think we don't know that much about the uh, uh, the spin-offs yet, right? Because uh, I, I think they want to keep the spoilers, you know, non-spoiled, quite frankly. While at the same time teasing anticipation. Oh, tease me, baby, tease me. Uh, so, but better than torture revival. Why a torture revival wouldn't work on screen? It totally would work on screen. What are you talking about? Uh, uh, well, again, let's hear it. Torchwood last aired in tw uh, 2011 when fans had begged for a series revival. The show's full series, Miracle Day, wasn't necessarily received, received uh, well due to the uh, the series cha exchanging Cardiff for sunny California setting. Uh, yeah, and also too many episodes. It just didn't work. It was just dragged out. Nice seeing Nana Visitor in it, though, right? Who Who is still hot with the uh, with the grey hair? <laughs> uh, the story was also uh, too dragged out. There we go. Uh, among other things, despite that, fans uh, still create talks with, especially since uh, uh, Miracle Day Climax is an open-ended collusion with Rex Matheson revealed to be the, an immortal like Jack Hartness. I, I don't remember who Rex Matheson is. And Jilly... Uh, Kitzinger recruited by an, uh, no, all this is forgotten forget it it's all gone it's all gone right I, uh, do you remember any of this I don't um, okay there we go. Doink. Uh, however since Miracle Day was a co-production with American Network stars BBC do not own the rights to Rex Matthew and J okay, who gives a shit right they don't they don't care. They, they'll just do different characters, right? It's not like you can't have torture without Rex Matheson and Jilly Kitzinger. I don't even know who they are, right? Uh, uh, basically, torture, you need Captain Jack, essentially. I don't think Big Finish already, has already explored torture post-Miracle Day years in abundance. Overall, torture's revival picked up from where the audio's left off. Uh, uh, TV audience members will be confused. No, they wouldn't. It's been 12 years ago. But I don't think they're doing torture, right? Again, because Captain Jack was uh, John Barrowmill's cancelled. Oh, I'd love to see him in the 60th, though. That would be that would be gorgeous. That that would actually make a lot of things uh, a lot better, I think. Uh, if torture is to return to the television, it will be with a new cast of characters. Otherwise, many viewers without knowledge of audio dramas uh, may be questioning a, uh, why a certain character died in Doctor Who's season two finale is now back running um, Torchwood. Who died in the season two finale? Is Yvonne Hartman back running Torchwood? Uh, okay, fine. Moreover, most of Torchwood's recognisable faces are unfortunately deceased <laughs> in the present timeline. Uh, there's also controversy surrounding uh, uh, Torchwood lead John Barrowman to further require a whole new cast for a revival series. Again, only if you subscribe to the absolute nonsense of toxic fandom, right? If you subscribe to that, oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to, yeah, 100%. We're going to need to fix that. Uh, by contrast, Unit has a large backlog of characters uh, who have mountains of opportunity to explore, while Torchwood has been around since uh, the 1800s in the Doctor Who universe. It was only on screen to, to, since 2006. However, first appeared in 1968 would have been the uh, unit, however, has been 1968, has been prominent since. This means there's a lot. Oh, God, this is so dumb. No, no, they'll just make new characters, right? I, I don't know what to tell you. 
Uh, Eula has more Doctor Who history to capitalise on. If you write it that way, yes, that's true. Uh, from classic Doctor Who, there are, I mean, just the, the intense lack of knowledge or understanding. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's mind-blowing. Okay, it's CBR. Never disappoints, baby. Never disappoints. Uh, from Classic Doctor Who, there are unit soldiers that spent time with the Doctor, like Mike Yates and John Benton. From uh, Modern Doctor Who, there's, more, there's a, a scientific advisor, uh, Malcolm Taylor, uh, that was played by, what's his name? You're not getting, Lee Evans, you're not getting him back. As well as uh, unit officer, Ariza McGimbo, McGambo, uh, both of whom has been uh, seen since, uh, have not been seen since season four. God, you just like them because you like her because she's black, and that's it, because you're a racist, I think. Uh, considering how well-received they were by fans, despite very few appearances, they weren't that well-received. I mean, like, nobody hated them, but nobody gave a shit, right? Their long overdue uh, comeback. 2013's 50th anniversary special, The Day of the Doctor, introduced another scientific advisor, Petronella Osgood, who always got under my bloody skin. Like, like I thought, okay, yeah, that's the thing. Kate Lethbridge is bland as hell, and uh, uh, Osgood is just irritating, right? Like she's an irrit. She seems like more of a piss take on fandom than Wiz Kid in Greatest Show in the Galaxy. Don't know what I'm talking about. Go watch Greatest Show in the Galaxy. Very clearly, John Nathan Turner taking piss out of out of fandom, who absolutely uh, uh, did not like him. Shall we say at that time? Which is a shame, really, because the best stuff was the last couple of years. Anyway, oh, I don't know. I I, I like I like the Sylvester McCoy years, but a lot of people prefer. Um, the Peter Davison, uh, well, some people like the uh, uh, Colin Baker. It's also common knowledge that Martha and Joe's joined unit herself. It's not common knowledge. What? Do you know what these words actually mean? No, it's not common knowledge. Like you don't ask somebody to say, "Hey, do you know Martha Jones joined unit?" They go, "Who's Martha Jones and what's unit?" Right? None of this is common knowledge. Right? Uh, which allowed a crossover with Torchwood in the first place. Nobody gave a shit. Surprisingly, Torchwood isn't the only Doctor Who spin-off that ended abruptly. Back in 2016, class was cancelled after one season, despite having the Doctor Who's most memorable cliffhangers today. It, no, no, nobody... Okay. Why did you do a school set, a, a show set in a school where, where all the characters were in their 30s, right? All the school kids look like they're in their 30s, right? You know, the, 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 if you've ever seen the Please Sir movie, you'll see they're all like creakingly old all the school kids at that point and they look at the kids from uh, class going oh they're a bit old uh also i don't know i i watched the first one with the capaldi and i just didn't really care but bottom line right didn't connect to me at all um similarly yeah who cared about the good cliffhangers did it have viewers obviously not did torchwood obviously it did uh, similarly, due to the unfortunate part of Elizabeth Slade in 2011, the final season of Sarah Jane events was cut short, unable to finish its original storyline. Since Unit uh, would not be restricted to a specific setting or storyline, well, again, what in your diseased little imagination and head? Yeah, uh, um, uh, it, it could address, it, uh, finish storylines could continue. That isn't a revi that isn't a revival series. Then it's going to be a unit spin-off. Uh, additionally, if Doctor if other Doctor Who spin-offs are planned and a crossover is in the card, Unit's role in uh, on Earth allows for this uh, easy integration. Oh God, it's still going. Really? Uh, ultimately, if Torchwood ever gets a revival, it's not. Uh, oh, that's quite a good picture of the the, the, the Brigadier about to uh, shoot the. Uh, what was it? What was the name of that demon? Bring of Dark, the big blue guy from Battlefield? Ah, uh, whatever his name is. Uh, nothing ventured, nothing gained! <laughs> they, they shot like three different endings, right? Where where, where he, uh, I think two or three different endings. One where the brig dies, one where, where one was sore, and I can't remember what the other one was. Uh, ultimately, I've talked to you ever, uh, ever sees a revival and the series isn't based on uh, based in Cardiff. There would be an uproar, especially because of the backlash regarding Miracle Day. However, it was, there wasn't... Okay, the backlash was for the lack of quality, mate, okay? However, um, this, however, limits the stories it can tell. Most of the torture branches are destroyed or shut down. Well, again, why are you lost in the uh, um, in the world building from 12 years ago? They can basically do anything. Uh, honestly, John Barrowman with essentially anyone will do, will, will do the same thing, right? 
Overall, a you uh, was it? Uh, it can include characters from across the universe, which ties them Doctor as opposed to uh, Cardas didn't. Where, where, where are we? Are? I missed something. You can take adventures from the uh, uh, from the concrete ground with a literal jungle. Okay, fine, they can film it anywhere. Overall, unit series seems more uh, 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 allows for more explore, uh, exploration than talk to revive. But again, in your idiot small little mind, yes. But that's why writers are writers. They're able to write something that 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 works. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, that makes all this work yeah I, again writing's bit bit of a lost art um basically he's saying oh no john barrowman's council we want black women uh, that's a, that, I, honestly i just boiled down the argument that whole article to one sentence right that really is all it is right uh, um <laughs> okay so let's move on to the screen rant now screen rant this might be a, a, a readable article, right? This article might actually not be bad. It's by Mark Donaldson, who is right a lot of the time, in my opinion, right? He wrote quite a good article on something about Alan Moore uh, uh, inventing the time war before uh, uh, we saw it on screen. Uh, and I enjoyed that article, right? I, that, that was on my live stream last night. Oh, excuse me, that was on my, my, my live stream last night. And I'm going to clip that out and make a video of it because it, it interesting, right? Well, and well written. So let's see what he's got to say. Uh, says that, uh, Doctor Who's Time War secretly began with the Seventh Doctor story. I, I, I kind of think it began with Genesis of the Daleks, quite frankly. But okay. Although he didn't give the command, the Seventh Doctor is responsible for the last great Time Wars. But, uh, time War between the Time Wars and the Daleks. What are you saying with uh, Remembrance of the Daleks, right? Where he blows up Scarrow. Well, again, I think they'd already started at that point. Okay, so the time was a big part of Rusty Davis' 2005 revival of Doctor Who, but its origins lie in a classic era, the Seventh Doctor's Vest McCoy. Again, I think the I think it's much more Genesis of the Daleks, right? The last great time war was fought between the Time Wars of Gallifrey and the Daleks of Scarrow, and why it was observed by lesser species, the consequences were widely felt in the day in the day of the Doctor. It was revealed that a Zygon homeworld was destroyed in the early in the early days of the Time War. Well, the Gelf played uh, played on survivor's guilt for the Ninth Doctor to manipulate him into going along with their scheme to take Earth by force. No, that's what he stopped them, right? He wanted uh, to uh, let them take the bodies of the dead, which uh, probably not, not not the best of plans, right? Comic writer Alan Moore, this is exactly the article that he wrote the other day. Comic uh, uh, writer Alan Moore uh, originated Doctor Who's Time War in Doctor Who magazine in the 1980s. But uh, Rusty Davis' uh, Time War brilliantly incorporated the classic era of the TV show. Uh, okay. It was, if the, uh, it was a smart way to give new viewers some fascinating mythology to latch onto while enticing existing Doctor Who fans with uh, hints of what, uh, what had been happening on screen since McGann TV movie in 96 and the broadcast of Rose in 2005. However, despite Rusty Davis' name-checking of Genesis Daleks, uh, as an uh, as the inciting incident for the time war, a far bigger act was committed by the seventh doctor in, in 1980s Remember the Daleks. Uh, yeah, he does blow up Gallifrey and um, Scarrow in that. I mean, but uh, um, but yeah, uh, the vibe I got is the time war had really it was a, it was a cold time war at that point, right? Did he did that escalate it into a into a hot time war? But I mean, you know, it, I don't know. I don't know. Look, America blew up Russia's pipeline, Nord Stream 2, right? And I expected that to cause war, right? Did it what, about six months ago? It didn't, right? Maybe it's just taking time to do that, right? Maybe it takes time, time to get lined up. So it took like some time between Sylvester McCoy uh, uh, and the time was starting in the late Eighth Doctor uh, uh, era. So anyway, remember the Daleks of the Seventh Doctor returned to Earth to retrieve the ancient Gallifreyan weapon behind, uh, whoever he left behind the hand of Omega. Didn't strike me it was actually a weapon, or it could be perverted into a weapon, as it can turn a sun nova to make it into into an Eye of Harmony to power their time ships, right? Uh, uh, the weapon had become much sought after artifact by both sides in the uh, Dalek Civil War. Introducing himself uh, as the president elect of the Time Lords of, of Gallifrey, I think that was kind of just like bigging himself up. <laughs> you know, it was just, it, it it wasn't real, right? <laughs> uh, uh, the Doctor Commander of the Dalek Emperor revealed to be Davros. Terrible, I tell you, 
I'm still mad about this, right? I was at a 88, right? I was at a Panopticon. It was in London. Where was it? College of Science or something? I can't remember. I can't remember. I was in London. Nice sunny day. I was waiting in line to go on. And somebody said, oh, I got the script for uh, Remembrance of the Daleks. Do you want to hear some spoilers? I'm like, no. No, I don't. Right? No, I don't. And then he told me, and the, the Emperor Dalek's in it. And he's Davros. I'm like, cocksucker. Really? I think we were like an episode or two in. Right? Uh, where was that? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, um, I wonder if I look it up. Panopticon 1988. Hang on. Panopticon 1988. Do they have the dates of it? Um, I like Brighton. Uh, it was a little thing. No, this is uh, uh, um, um, Doctor Who Convention Panopticon. 1988. Uh, so it says in Doctor Who Magazine 132. This was January. Uh, they don't mention it. But I wonder when, when Panopticon was. Anyway, anyway, I think the it was like an episode or two in, right? I was like, why? Why did you do that, mate? Uh, and, and, you know, again, you, you have to read the, the novelization. I think there was, it was something about him stealing the TARDIS that, that had some psychic defenses which erased his knowledge of the of the Daleks. Uh, uh, so he didn't recognize them in the Daleks, right? But his plan was to take the uh, Hand of Omega uh, uh, and... Um, Hide it somewhere. I think that was in the in the uh, new adventure Lung Barrow. They, they they dealt with that. I think that happened, right? Um, President elect. No, he wasn't. Uh, 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 <laughs> the Doctor confronted the Emperor Director Vilby Davros, Terry Malloy, uh, and practically goaded him into using the Hand of Omega. Well, this was really the invention of Sylvester McCoy's Doctor, right? Uh, it was the scene at the end where he talks talks the Black Dalek into self destruction, which I really liked, right? Also, like Happiness Patrol. Uh, uh, where he, he the, the, there's also like an extra scene they put in to, to fill it out where uh, um, there was the snipers right on the uh, on his gantry right and he, he he challenged one to like to kill him say okay just pull the trigger end my life right uh, and he can't do it and he doesn't understand why and that great some great scenes for Celeste McCoy in that season and like, I will think this season afterwards uh, the Doctor had booby-trapped the hand, so upon activation by Davros, it was destroy, uh, destroyed his homeworld uh, of Davros, Scaro, uh, and Davros's ship before returning to Gallifrey, where the fourth Doctor had refused to commit genocide against the Daleks. The seventh Doctor manipulated uh, uh, the Daleks creator into doing it himself. By identifying myself as the president-elect of the high, uh, high Council, the Seventh Doctor effectively committed a, an act of war against... The, well, again, was the war already happening at that time? Right, they were like looking for the hand of Omega, right? So it looks like the, the war was actually on. Uh, on behalf of uh, Gallifrey, starting the centuries long time war that broke the Doctor. What has the Doctor revealed about, uh, about how the time war started? On TV, Doctor has revealed a lot about the devastating end of the time war and the effect it has on the Doctor. A rough timeline of the build up of the war, sketching out Rusty Davis in Meet the Doctor, a short piece of writing included in the 2006 uh, uh, annual. Interestingly, Rusty Davis' timeline ignored the Seventh Doctor role in destroying Scarrow, even though it's widely regarded as, as the main... No, it's not widely regarded! Mark Donaldson! No, you're being a, a naughty fanboy at this point. You're saying, you're saying things that aren't true, sir. Um, fine, where are we up to? The... Uh, um, uh, there we go over here. Oh, we not? It's uh, uh, oh, that's widely regarded with me. No, it's not. Uh, in in expanded media, the first act of the time war was a celestial intervention in, 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 attempt to get enlist the full doctor to prevent the Daleks from being created. So now you are saying, Genesis of the Daleks, okay. Leaning into the Time Wars' earlier plans to erase their species from history, the Doctor plotted uh, the, to send a replica of the Fifth Doctor. The Daleks probably to send a replica of the Fifth Doctor to the High Council of Gallifrey uh, to, yeah, to assassinate them. Uh, this plot was foiled at the start of the Dalek Civil War, 
by the destruction of Scarrow. Well, maybe it, that was like First Blood. I know, Rusty Davis written together uh, a classic Doctor a classic Doctor Who with his new Time War mythology, reinvigorated the show for the 21st century. It'll be interesting to see how he refreshes it for his new era. I, that much I agree with. It will be interesting if he refreshes it uh, for the new era. So it's like we're talking about in the new era that uh, um, uh, Bear's talking about is Matt Smith coming back, right? Is Matt Smith still no announcement? I, boy, we could use some good news, right? We could use some damage control over from Disney. That would be fan freaking tastic Matt Smith's Doctor Who wish could be the Doctor's biggest challenge yet. I wonder what his wish is. Uh, Matt Smith has shown interest in returning to the show, but, I mean, like, he was at a convention and say, no one's asked me to return. Really? I don't believe you, Matt, mate. I don't believe you. Uh, returning to Doctor Who, but not as a Doctor, and his return could be the biggest, uh, Doctor's biggest challenge. Let's have a look. Matt Smith has shown interest in returning to Doctor Who, but who wrote this? Jessica Smith. Normally wrong about everything. If I'm remembering her correctly, let's have a look. Yes, she she is a track record of being awfully wrong about a lot of things. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Fine. Doink. Let's go back over here. Uh, so Matt Smith's shown interest in returning Doctor Who, but not as the character... Uh, he has chosen to be the Doctor's biggest challenge yet. Uh, Doctor Who is not about is not shy about bringing back familiar faces. Peter Capaldi appeared multiple times before becoming the twelfth Doctor, and David Tennant, Catherine Tate returning as the Doctor Donald for sixth anniversary. Matt Smith, however, has not reappeared in Doctor, but recently in, in recent interviews, uh, there could be interest in, uh, in him coming back. Well, yeah, we all want him to come back, right? I mean, he was awesome. Um, Matt Smith's era in Doctor Who was filled with many big moments, including the explaining River Song storyline. Well, they kind of set it all up for that. Their wedding, the Doctor having to age naturally to uh, and the 50s. I mean, I did like that's the way he died. He just grew old defending this planet for thousands of years. I, 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 that worked for me. And after the 50th anniversary, which David Tennant returned from, despite Matt Smith's time as Doctor, including huge aspects of Doctor's past, such as the Time War, uh, the War Doctor, and the Time... Oh, yeah, we were introduced to the War Doctor. Why were we introduced to the War Doctor? Because uh, uh, um, Stephen Moffat went out to lunch with uh, Chris Eccleston, and he felt like he could have talked him round to come in, but he just felt uh, um, that was not really the way to go, right? Uh, um you know, it's it, 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 and basically, and that's how he came up with the idea of uh, uh, the War Doctor, which was absolutely brilliant, right? I mean, that is, that's what a great writer does, right? It, it really was a good original idea. Uh, but Oka James Matt Smith got so. What's his wish? Matt Smith returning as a master would be the Doctor's hardest battle. I think the Valley Art, frankly, more than the Master, don't you? Uh, um, I think Matt Smith as a Valiar could be really interesting. I mean, I, he is good at play, playing the villain. You saw him. I like the ambiguous villain. I, I, I liked him in the Game of Thrones show, right? I thought he, he was very good in that. Matt Smith released a statement if he returned to Doctor Who, he would like to return as a master to uh, uh, the Doctor's old friend, but greatest enemy via YouTube. Smith claims that it could never work, uh, that it could never work to return as the master, but it will be an insane uh, uh, trick from the master and the doctor's hardest battle. Yeah, I, I think it was not a bad idea, frankly. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the doctor and master have the most intense fights uh, uh, because of their history and they are part of... Uh, uh, and they are in part for, uh, very, very alike, which causes a lot of torment for the Doctor. I guess so. I mean, I, I, the bit when Missy, I, I, was, I was looking at the, the um, Witch's Apprentice, or the Wizard, whatever, uh, the Wizard's Apprentice, whatever, the Witch's Familiar, the Witch's Apprentice, uh, uh, and there's a bit where Missy, what I thought worked very well as a master, uh, uh, showed a couple walking with their dog, and said, let me explain to you your, the relationship you have with the Doctor. Uh, uh, you're the dog. <laughs> I'm the friend, right? Uh, I, I kind of hear that. Uh, ha uh, having the Master return as one of the Doctor's old faces would amplify the torment, uh, torment to a whole new level. I mean, there's a lot of good writing possibilities in that, right? Look at that. She's written a good article. Amazing. I, I feel the fabric of reality tearing itself apart. 
Uh, the Doctor has always struggled not to be able to um, uh, reform the Master, but always felt uh, some of the blame in the Master's decisions. The Master represents what the Doctor would have been if not making the conscious decision. Uh, uh, if not making the con uh, the conscious choice to be uh, be good, um, I, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I guess so. Uh, um, okay. Uh, but it, well, it, does, it, does that the doctor make the? Is the doctor by the eleventh incarnation making the conscious decision to be good? I think that's more of a decision of the. Uh, oh. I think it's more the first and second Doctor, round there, right? I mean, the first and first Doctor, he was somewhat ambiguous at, at first. Uh, it would be the hardest battle and will make the Doctor face his own flaws, which uh, uh, he's never keen to. This will work much better as a Valiard. I, I am really, genuinely, Matt Smith of the Valiard, I think, will be really, really good. Matt Smith returning as Master in the in Doctor Who is possible. Well, anything's possible, mate. Despite Matt Smith claims that uh, returning as the master is not possible, it uh, it could actually work very well. I agree with you. Matt Smith thinks he looks too old to be the Doctor specifically. No, you're fine, mate. Look, they worked out a way for Peter Davison. You know, they, you, you, they'll fight. It's called writing, right? You write round a problem. It's just writing. It's not hard. I mean, it is hard, I guess. Um... Uh, uh, where about to? Smith evidently still cares about Doctor and the praise Rossi Davis and new Do and the new Doctor shooting at well, which emphasizes the chances of him returning. Rossi Davis uh, is already including many old faces of the six. I mean, there's going to be a lot, right? Five Doctors time, mate. Uh, but it's going to be the f uh, and it'll be the uh, uh, and going back to the first season of Doctor Who for plenty of references, including old enemies. Uh, well, again, I mean, like, Meet the Beep isn't really an old enemy, right? It's kind of a new enemy. Uh, it is not unlike that Rusty Davis would want to experiment with the infamous Master and create the Doctor's hardest challenge yet. Plus, uh, the 12th Doctor... I mean, it, basically, it depends how Shooty Gatwa bounces off Matt Smith. I mean, really, that's really the bottom line. I think the Master always works as it's a... Um, as a dark reflection of the Doctor. Like, like so I think Delgado's Master was like a James Bond villain to John Pertwee's James Bondish Doctor, right? I think the macabre master of uh, uh, Deadly Assassin very much, you know, uh, um, was the dark reflection of the gothic horror of the, yeah, the first half of the Tom, Tom Baker years. Uh, Anthony Ainley, again, I think uh, um, is, a, is a 1980s dark reflection of the master. And then they kind of mutated him when they when he appeared in survival into be uh, like I had that new outfit and, and it was like a dark reflection of the, of the uh of the seventh doctor and i think john sim kind of worked in white worked in the same way equally missy missy was an amalgam of all masters in the same way that the commander's doctor was an amalgam of all masters and then such the one just kind of jumped around laughing a lot uh um I don't think that was that was Doctor Who. Yeah, quite frankly, I don't think that was Doctor Who. Will the new Doctor Who be Doctor Who? Well, that's it. I always assumed it would be, right? I also pretty sure that it's going to be very. It's going to be absolutely the core of Doctor Who. Uh, uh, and then this casting happened, right? Uh, uh, encouraging the absolute worst people in reality. So I want to be clear. The problem that uh, uh, the casting is uh, Jeeks Monsoon, uh, RuPaul's uh, Drag Race winner. Here's a problem I have with uh, um, with drag in 2023. Firstly, it's being used to, uh, I'm not saying universally, but it is being used to uh, uh, accustomize children to hypersexuality of an adult nature, right? That is like actually going on, actually happening. When you have a minor wearing slutty makeup and heels, right? A, a minor boy... That's that sexual exploitation of a minor. That's not that's not kindness. That's not freedom, right? Equally, uh, um, I think transgendered surgery for minors uh, uh, is horrific, right? I'll, I'll explain. Uh, for minor boys is horrific. I think it's for girls as well is horrific. But for minor boys is because, uh, uh, as I understand, if I'm wrong, uh, uh, let me know why I'm wrong, right? That uh, that a. a Somebody who's never had sex, right? Somebody who is a virgin, because they're not of the age to have sex, right? To, to consent to sex. Uh, um, if you remo if you do surgery on them that removes their penis, particularly the head of the penis, it means they're never going to reach sexual 
climax satisfaction, right? You're taking that all good away from you and you're making essentially a pouch that a man can then have sex with and you simulate it. As a, you're taking away sexual gratification from a human being for their entire life. And that's one of the most... Look, speaking of somebody who very, very, very much likes sexual gratification, like very, very... It's one of my favourite things ever, right? If I had a choice of, uh, uh, you know, evil wizard came along and said, I'm going to erase Doctor Who from reality or I'm going to erase you having sexual gratification... Doctor Who's going, baby, and, and I like Doctor Who, right? I like Doctor Who. So this is the um, so the those two factors together make me very, very uncomfortable, right? About having a a, uh, a drag performer in a family show, right? And I, 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 I hate that I'm taking this prudish attitude, but like it's not me that changed everything, right? Every it, people were fine with drag queens up until. They're cutting little boys' dicks off and, uh, uh, you know, and, and grooming children, hypersexualizing children via drag, right? Everyone was fine with it until that point, right? Uh, uh, what, what? Consenting ad adults do in private is what they do in private, and I don't think anybody should be, you know, judging each other for that, right? But, like, when it's, when it's involving... When you bring it into a public forum which does involve children... It's a problem, right? And I don't sure Russell D. Davis understands that, even though I think he's got a very strong understanding of humanity. This this casting worries me a lot. I, I'm I, I'm waiting to see what it's going to be because I'm, uh, um, I mean honestly, like the normalization of uh, 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 you know of, of of trans as well, which has already been done, right? But I, I just feel you know there's there's a lot of questions. To uh, uh, to ask again, we're talking about minors. I I'm really, I don't think it's possible to give informed consent to have your dick cut off when you're 12. Okay, I don't think that's possible, right? And I think it's evil to do so. Right? Okay, no matter how surgically it's uh, uh, it's done, right? You know how surgically safely it's done. But anyway, let's. But the, but Mark Donaldson here. This is he's he's on his uh, uh, he's, he's on the naughty step now. He's uh, he loves this. Doctor Who season 14 con uh, casting brilliantly continues with new uh, Rossi Davis trend. Again, uh, um, this is again, this is the point where, where society bifurcates, right? This is the point where we split into two groups, where it's either stunning and brave or it's cruel and evil, right? And I think people, parents, want to protect their children. More than not, I think this is a thing that could really hand Rossi Davis' ass to him. Right, I think having Yasmin Finney and, and the other trans actors in it, I think probably was fine. This is the point where, um, you know, I, I think it's uh, um, problematic, right? To, to, you, to use a toxic word. Doctor's casting a two time drag race winner, Jinx Monsoon, continue to play. Uh, so it's big name casting. Uh, and again, all depends on the character, right? All depends on the character. I, I it's uh. Uh, but if they're playing like a drag character, even if it's an alien that's clearly a drag character, I don't. I, I I've, I've got a problem with it, right? So fine. So uh, Jinx Monsoon, I think it was second year show when I like Neil Patrick Harris. Brown, Jinx Monsoon is also a Broadway star, having recently starred in Chicago. Their casting of her as Doctor Who New Year aims uh, big, uh, big in terms of guest casting. No, it it, it indicates that they uh, that Rusty Davis very is very concerned about um, normalizing fringe sex sexualities. When I say fringe sexualities. Uh, uh, a recent census came out, and apparently, ninety-seven percent of people are straight, uh, you know, straight heterosexual. Uh, one and a half percent of people are gay, bi or gay, and like a half a percent uh, uh, identify as trans. Right? This is a teeny tiny demographic, uh, um, and they may be ecstatic with you, Russell. Right? I think the the ninety-seven, ninety-eight percent people. Uh, uh, not of this worldview may not be right. Uh, so okay. RuPaul's Drag Race is a huge franchise. It's spawning fifteen seasons, uh, spin-off shows, and multiple international adaptations. I have to tell you, when I first saw RuPaul's Drag Race, I never seen it. When I first saw it on the schedules, I was like, "This is something that uh, um, you know, this is like, you know, this is like that that I feel should be after." A watershed, right? It should be. It, it. This shouldn't be on, you know, open television, 
in uh, you know before nine, 9 p.m. Right? Because I, I, because it's of an adult nature. Drag is of an adult nature. Uh, which has several Doctor Who fans, uh, several, which has seen several Doctor Who fans compete, such as the winner uh, of season two, uh, Lawrence Cheney. Okay, uh, it's been announced that Jinx Monsoon will play a major role, uh, no doubt leading to the inevitable speculation of which legacy character Jinx will be reviving. However, the casting announces so much bigger whether uh, Jinx Monsoon will be playing a regenerated Missy or a new incarnation of the, of the Rani. How about a male character? Again, if sex is fluid, why, why, why not a male character? It represents another hugely positive step in increasing diversity in Doctor Who. Again, this is the point, right? Oh, I did. But this is the point where society bifurcates, right? Is transgendered surgery for children kind, right? Is um, uh, a customizing children to adult sexuality kind? Or is it sexual exploitation, right? You tell me. Seems to me is child sexual exploitation. So I don't see it being a good thing. While also being a, a, a huge global casting coup, it will be, it will guarantee uh, the show's brand new uh, shows a, bra uh, uh, a brand new audience. Yes, the audience of RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah, you don't want that tiny audience, mate. You want a bigger audience. Why Jinx Doctor Who casting is so huge? Uh, RuPaul's Drag Race is a hugely global, uh, hu uh, huge global hit. Jinx wants to be perfectly cut. I mean, everybody says she's very talented, or he's very talented. I, here's the thing: this, Jinx identifies as a bloke who's gay, who uh, is married to a bloke. I, I think, but I think they, now they identify as being female because it's, it's uh, efficacious. Do you think Dylan Mulvaney is going to uh, uh, is doing an Andy Kaufman type type thing, and is going to Come out at some point and say, "Dude, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a little girl. I'm not a little girl. I was trolling you. Do you think he's going to do that? Because um, <laughs> he really wants to be famous, right? And he is famous. I don't know. I think he likes being famous. Uh, Drag Race fans are just as passionate about the show as Doctor Who, attending annual conventions. Okay, fine. Again, one sec. Let's have a look. RuPaul. The drag race audience viewership. Let's see, uh, uh, Statistica. Let's see how it got, right? Uh, uh, what the audience figures were. Okay, we allow all this stuff. Uh, let's see. Numbers of, uh, yeah, okay, dude, for God's sake, it got. 987,000, yeah, that's really, that's the audience you're going for, is it, right? Instead of the 10 million, you're going for the 1 million. Yeah, look, dude, I, I don't know what to tell you. This is not going to work out well for you, right? And it's going down, Jesus. Like, uh, 2019 one got 700,000, Jesus. Like, this is not a huge demographic. Oh, season 15 set record. So what, what did it get? Season 15, uh, 0.42. Fuck me. Are they, I mean, have they lost their minds? Uh, uh, so it's 1.3 interactions. Uh, uh, 1.3. Uh, yeah, look, dude. You, look, I, I, I hate it. Like, do you think this is going to work out? Going to work out well? I think this is actually the thing that could sink the new era of Doctor Who. I really do. Uh, uh, hopefully Russell's smelling the coffee, right? Right? Yeah, you know, working it out now. I really hope he is, right? I really hope our worst fears aren't going to be realised, right? Uh, so fine. So yeah, so you get them in. That's fine. Uh, there's an element of Jinx Monsoon casting that goes beyond the bi uh, a bigger viewing figure. We mean that tiny viewing figure. You blithering moron. Uh, at the time when right-wing politics on both sides of the Atlantic are stoking moral panic about drag queens reading fairy tales to children. Again, Mark Donaldson, do you have any bloody children? Do you have any children? Because I, 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 don't, I don't know what to tell you, mate. Yeah, I am in a moral fucking panic about drag queens reading, to, uh, reading fa fairy tales uh, to children. Why? Because they're telling, they're telling children that this woman face, you can, you, that you can uh, put on slutty makeup and look like a complete total whore, and that's a good thing. That's going to lead to a good, fulfilled life. I don't think it's going to lead to a good, fulfilled life if you're a girl. I don't think it's going to lead to a good, fulfilled life if you're a boy. 
right? This is all about narcissism and, and using children to uh, uh, make yourself feel like you're a more normative person. When I, yeah, just not. So yeah, I mean, like they're stoking moral panic because fucking drag queens are fucking grooming fucking children. Fucking moron. Oh, why are you why are you worrying about grooming children? Oh, what a moral panic. Yes, I am in a moral fucking panic about that. You pedophile cunts. Yes, I actually am. Oh, it's only fucking a kid. What's the big deal? I, I, look, to you it might not be. To me it actually is. To, I, I, I'm going to make a guess that I think probably uh, uh, I am in the in the vast majority, right? Let's let's have a look at Mark Donaldson. Let's see 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 how old he is, all right? Because they normally have the, the picture by the buyer. Uh, yeah, look at him. You, you you don't have any kids, mate, right? You do not have any kids. I love him to come on my channel and, and try try and like uh, rationalize this this uh, you know <laughs> pedophilic bullshit. Uh, where we at? No, no. Like, the, the, there's no greater show of allyship in the mainstream family uh, family show like Doc 2 putting a non-binary drag performer in a major role. Yes, cunt, that's what's going to cause it a problem, right? It's further evidence that Hugh Stray's Doc 2 continues to make in improving diversity across all aspects of the show. Uh, 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 yeah, look at all the improvement on diversity. Oh, it improves so much. Wait a minute, is that, is that chart upside down? No. No, no, no. Again, I, uh, uh, I understand this is their religion that it, they think everybody's going to like it better. Oh yeah, but no, <laughs> complete bollocks, mate. Um, it's most like Jinxum Castle's original character created by Rusty Davis. However, other politicians could be in season fourteen. Yeah, I know. Uh, blah blah blah. Not really. Uh, uh, again. Uh, um, it all depends on the character, right? All depends on the character, but you can't escape the world that we live in, right? We can't escape that, that, that you know, children are being sexualized with drag. I mean, that's happening. Here's a few things I think I can show on YouTube, all right? Uh, let me see if I can find them. Uh, where are the pictures? Yeah, this is from a family-friendly drag show, right? Yeah, look, mate, that's not family-friendly, right? That's from a family-friendly Christmas drag show. That is not family friendly. I'm sorry that you like it. I'm sorry that it validates you, right? It's not family friendly, right? Uh, uh, here we go, another one. Uh, oh, what a moral panic, right? Yeah, uh, uh, Miss Drew and the crew, uh, all ages drag. There's no such thing as a, a family friendly drag show, right? Um, yeah, look, that is not family friendly. I, 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 like, I don't know what to tell you. Look at that. How is tell me how this is family friendly? Tell me how this is a, a an empty moral panic. Like explain it to me. I think it's a reasonable question. I think the reason you don't want to answer these reasonable bloody questions is because you got no bloody answer for them, right? That's exactly what I think the problem is. So look, this is a thing. This is where society splits. This is the thing that will sink Doctor Who. I hope it's not the case, right? I hope it's not the case. I hope they're able to um, reconfigure, shall we say, right? Like, like just like they did with the Telly tub, Tubby Daleks, and just forget about it, move on. Doctor Who's good at forgetting about things and moving on. They forgot about Half Human on the mother side. I think they're forgetting about the Timeless Child. Uh, uh, I th and I think one of the things he wants to do is try and do the diversity that Christian will completely fail to do, right? Uh, but you know, mate. You need some normal friends, right? You need some friends outside of, you know, your bubble, right? Because this is... Like, what I just showed you, under no stretch of the imagination is family-friendly. And I'm sorry, right? No... I'm not the one who made things this way, right? I am not the one that made things this way. Anyway, uh, 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 so there you go. That's a little, little, little bit of stuff going down. The, the incredibly stupid view of reality from bonkers people being bonkers, generally speaking, uh, uh, in the most bonkers way humanly possible. I am back tomorrow night at 7 o'clock UK time. Join me, live show. We will take the piss. We will look and see what's going on in the world. Uh, uh, we will have a laugh or two. One, like, uh, one would like to hope. You know, all those things are happening. Uh, like, share, subscribe, comment. Have yourselves a freaking awesome day! Yeah.